Hello everybody. Hope you're having a great day today. Today we're going to talk a bit about acceleration. The last couple sets of notes talked about speed and velocity, about things moving pretty much at a constant rate. So now we're going to talk about what happens when things change that rate. Acceleration is in fact a rate of change in velocity. Since it's a rate, it's how fast something happens. In this case, how fast your velocity changes. Now remember, since acceleration is a change in velocity, and since velocity is defined as speed and direction, there can be several ways to change acceleration. The most obvious way, of course, is to change your speed, like these dragsters in the background. When the light goes green, they take off, and they are speeding up the whole way down to the finish line. Then they shut them down, pop a parachute, and they slow down till they come to a stop. So it's, you could actually say drag racing is a race of acceleration. But that's the most obvious way to change your velocity is to change your speed. But it's not the only way. You can also change the velocity by simply changing your direction. Because velocity, remember, is defined as speed and direction, just changing your direction changes your velocity. These cars in the background picture here are drift racers and they are doing their best to maintain their speed as they go around the curve. Well, even if their speed doesn't change at all and stays steady, the fact that they're going around a curve means they're changing direction, so they are accelerating anyway. Okay, well most of the time in the real world, when we go to change direction, we change speed too. Kind of like this race car here. You notice that he's locking up the brakes as tires are smoking in an effort to slow down as he makes the curve. We usually slow down when we turn curves when we're driving too. And we're still accelerating because we're changing both speed and direction at the same time. Now we call that deceleration when we slow down, but it's still an acceleration. Now acceleration can be thought of as positive and negative. A positive acceleration is speeding up. Anytime we talk about a negative acceleration, we're talking about slowing down. So how do we actually calculate acceleration? Well, we use a formula. And this is it. A equals V sub F minus V sub I divided by T. A of course stands for acceleration. The V with the F subscript stands for final velocity. That's the velocity something ends up going. The V sub I, on the other hand, stands for initial velocity. It's the velocity in the beginning. And then, of course, T is the time it takes to change the velocity. Let's look at a few samples to see how this is done. In our first sample, the question asks us to find the acceleration for a car that takes off from rest and accelerates to a speed of 24 meters per second in just six seconds. Well, how do we solve a problem? What's always the very first step in every problem you solve in physical science? That's right. Write the formula. And here we have it written. A equals V sub F minus V sub I all over T. Now, after we write the formula, what's the next thing we've got to do? You got it. We fill it in with numbers and units. Okay, so let's look. The car takes off from rest. Well, takes off from means that's the initial or the first velocity. And rest means you're not going anywhere. So rest is zero meters per second squared. Then, of course, if we look, the second velocity, the one it gets up to, is 24 meters per second. That means that's final. So that goes here, 24 meters per second. And then, of course, last but not least, is how long does it take it? Well, in this case, six seconds. So our six seconds goes in for time. Once we've got it filled in, all we've got to do is solve the problem. In this case, 24 minus 0 is 24. 24 divided by 6 is what? 4. You got it. And the units. Nothing really cancels here. 
Acceleration is a rate of change of velocity. Well, velocity is meters per second, and a rate means that's per second. So our units are meters per second per second, or more commonly written, four meters per second squared. Let's look at a second calculation. We have a car traveling 10 meters per second, and it accelerates up to 20 meters per second and does it in just five seconds. What's the first thing? You got it. Write the formula. Then, of course, fill it in. So our initial velocity, 10. Final, what we get up to is 20. And the time, 5. And notice I have units on every number. So 20 minus 10 is what? 10. 10 divided by 5? 2. So the answer is 2 meters per second per second, or 2 meters per second squared. Now for our final sample, let's look at what happens if things go the other way around and something slows down. We have a car that's traveling at 14 meters per second and slows to a stop. And he does it nice and gradually in, in seven seconds. First step, there's the formula. Now our next step, fill it in. Notice this time, 14 meters per second is our initial velocity because that's what he's going to start with, but the final is zero because he slows down and ends up at a stop. And then, of course, the time it takes to do it, seven seconds. Now, zero minus 14 gives you what? Negative 14. And negative 14 divided by seven is negative two. So the answer is negative two meters per second per second or negative two meters per second squared. Now we can also talk about acceleration on motion graphs. And we're going to start off talking about the same kinds of graphs we talked about last week. Last week we talked about distance time graphs or position time graphs. And we learned that the slope of those graphs was velocity. Well, we've also just learned that acceleration is a change in velocity. So if we have a slope of a distance versus time graph for an object that's accelerating, that means the slope is constantly changing. And a constantly changing slope is a curve. This means the slope of a distance versus time graph for an object that's accelerating is not a straight line, but a curve. Let's look at a couple of examples. Here we have an object that's speeding up. Notice that the slope is increasing. And here we have a distance versus time graph for an object that's slowing down. And here, the slope was pretty steep, and it tails off. Now, another graph that we commonly see is one where we plot an object's speed against time. In a speed versus time graph, the slope of this graph is acceleration. So for an object that's accelerating at a steady rate, these slopes are going to be straight lines. And this is how they shake out. A positive slope gives us a positive acceleration, which means speeding up. A flat line has no slope. That means the object has no acceleration. No acceleration means not changing speed. So the speed is staying the same. This is different from last week when we talked about distance versus time graphs. That flat line meant no speed, which meant sitting still. This graph is a speed time graph. The object's not sitting still. It's just not accelerating. It's staying at a steady speed. And finally, what about that negative slope? Well, if the slope is negative, acceleration is negative, and we know that means slowing down. So in your problems, the final question, question number 10, asks you to describe the motion of an object during each of the three labeled segments on this graph right here. Okay, so segment A, what's it doing? Segment B, what's it doing? Segment C, what's it doing? Remember, this is a velocity time graph, so it should be pretty easy, okay? Now, feel free to use this video over and over, rewind, review, pause, stop, whatever you need to to figure out um, any answers, and, and it'll stay on the Google Classroom. You can refer to it as much as you need to. One last thing, if you would like a few extra points, 
You can obviously see the shirt, Soft Kitty. Those of you that know me know some of my favorite television shows. And uh, if you can tell me which show Soft Kitty is from and you paste that in the comments on this assignment, I will be happy to give you a 10% bonus on this assignment. Have a great day.